Hi everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. In this video, I'm going to be painting up the poster boy of Blackstone Fortress, Janus Drake, in speedy quick time. This is the last episode of our standard set, so I'm sure by now you know I added debris to the base using sand, aquarium gravel, and super glue, and primed the model grey. Now let's start the clock and get painting. We'll start off with our blue paint, and using our standard brush, we'll cover the inside and outside of his coat, as well as his trousers. Make sure you get all up the inside of the difficult to reach spots like under the pelt and behind the legs. Don't worry about the cuffs or collar, but be as fast and messy as you like. You could paint the whole thing blue if you wanted, and if you've got a blue primer, it would be a good choice instead of grey. Next we'll paint his hands, face and breastplates with our khaki tan colour. None of these parts are really bordering anything blue, so you don't have to keep it clean, just get the colour on fast. Then I mixed my brown and yellow paint in a one-to-one -one mix, and painted the fur of the beast that's draped around his shoulders. There are a few parts here that border the blue, so be a little more careful along those edges. Now using your red paint, catch the collar, lapels, cuffs, his pistol holster, and the sheath of his knife. As I'll be doing his boots black too, it'll make painting the base really easy and you don't have to be so careful. Thin your black paint now and paint the rims, the surface, the debris of the base, and also go onto the boots, only being careful around where his trousers are tucked into them. Also use your black to base coat the spines and talons on the pelt. Now's the time to tidy up any areas you'd either like to be grey, or as a nice even undercoat for silver. I painted the sword, the little grenade thing at his waist, his pouches and pipe, and the handle of his pistol. I then gave some of his skin another coat of my tan colour to make sure the coverage was good and it wasn't too transparent. This is also useful for tidying up any little areas you might have got any other colours on the skin. In fact, just take a look over your model at this point and make sure all your base coats are solid. Now, using your detail brush and thinned white paint, paint the smoke from his pipe, as well as his hair and his glorious moustache. If you want, you can pop a dot of white in the eye recess too. It may look a bit rubbish at the moment, but after the washes and building up a few highlights, it'll look much better. If you're doing your bases like mine, give your debris an overbrush of grey and then white. While we're overbrushing, you can also quickly mix an off-white with one-to-one -one tan and white paint, and use this to catch some of the raised areas on the pelt. Go over the whole beast, including its spines and claws. Just be careful to angle your brush so you don't get any parts on Janus himself. Now, crack out your gold paint and paint his fancy breastplate. Watching this back, I realised that the little area at the bottom just over his belly is actually fabric and not armour. If I were doing this again, I would keep it blue, but for now, I'm not going to bother. Now, with your silver paint, paint his sword, the trim on his pistol holster, the knife sheath, and the, um, the cod piece. If you feel your hand is steady enough, you could also swap out your detail brush and catch the smaller metal areas like the bionic eye and the implant on his head, as well as any buttons on his coat. To bring out some subtle detail in his boots, I gave him a very, very light dry brush of white. So at almost 35 minutes of base coating, Janus is now ready for the wash stage. 
Give him a couple of minutes to make sure all the previous stages are dry and crack out your brown wash. Get plenty of wash on your brush and paint any areas that are red, brown, tan, gold and white. So the pelt, his breastplate, his coat's red trim, the holster and sheath, the smoke and his hands, face and hair. Go for a little coffee break, follow me on Instagram, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And give Janus about 10 minutes to let this wash dry. When you're happy he's ready, crack out your black wash and use this to shade every other part of the model. Try your best to complete whole areas at a time, and that way you'll avoid any tide marks as you disturb drying paint. Don't forget to add a bit of black wash to the spines and claws of the decorative beast too. No need to wait for the next step, just crack out your black paint and thin it slightly to reinforce the black of the rims, the base surface, avoiding the debris and feet as best you can. So after about three quarters of an hour of hands-on painting time, the speed paint for Janus Drake is complete. At this rate, you could easily get your first four adventurers painted up in a single evening and ready for battle. As always in these videos, I'll spend a few more minutes going over some extra steps you can add to bring out some more detail and vibrancy. Now I do this for fun and to help people out, and we don't do Patreon and we don't monetize our tutorials, but donations from awesome viewers like Arlin, Batiste, Jostein and Stefan help us stay stocked of materials and models to make these videos, and I'm really really grateful. If you'd like to donate and help us out too, there's a link in the description. Back to painting! The first thing we'll do is use our blue paint again, thin slightly more than before, and carefully streak it downwards using our detail brush on the raised edges of his coat. Avoid the recesses as best you can, and don't worry about covering everywhere. The variation will look good. Now, add a very tiny bit of white to your blue, a little goes a long way in this instance, and using the same streaking motion try to catch the central areas of the parts you've already marked out with the blue. You're aiming to have three tones visible here, the shaded dark blue, your standard blue, and this slightly lighter blue highlight. If you don't care about your sanity, you can use this lighter blue to highlight the area around the little curly design on the bottom corners of his coat. Be slow and steady if you want to try this, and don't worry too much about going into the recesses of the design, as we'll be able to fix it later. Now we'll do a similar thing with the red areas. Mix a tiny bit of yellow into your red and using your detail brush just catch the central areas of any parts you've painted red. This will give them a bit more vibrancy. We're not trying to edge highlight or anything, just add a bit of colour variation and boost the saturation. Add a tiny bit of white to the tan colour that you used for the skin, and catch the upward facing areas of his skin, including his fingers, the backs of his hands, the top of his head, ears, brow, nose, those fierce cheekbones, and the statesman-like chin. Now swap out to your silver paint, and very, very carefully try to catch the little silver nubs on his forehead, and highlight a little area of the bionic eye. And once you've taken care of that, just go around the other silver and gold parts, and just give them a little touch here and there to simulate areas of wear and tarnishing. Thin down your white paint, and using your detail brush, carefully add a few streaks on the top of his hair, going front to back. You can also use this thinned white to pick out the shape of his moustache again. To put some power in his bionic eye, we'll do the trick we often do in this series for blue lit objects. Base coat with blue, a mix of blue and white to catch the central area, 
and then an almost white, tiny, tiny highlight, almost randomly placed. And to finish off, we'll add some panel lining with our black wash and detail brush. This is a good way of fixing any mistakes if you try to highlight around that recessed design of the coat. Use this to add a bit more contrast to areas where colours border each other too. Now in just 72 minutes of active painting, Janus Drake is now tabletop standard and ready to seek out fame, fortune and mystery in the Blackstone Fortress. I think this model came out pretty well, personally. I particularly like the face and hair. For being so fast and simple, these speed painting techniques really bring out the character well. In the next episode, uh, oh, that's all of them painted. Yep, every single model from the standard Blackstone Fortress game has been covered in this series. I hope you've enjoyed being along for the journey and have found having Penny and I guide you through painting this set fun and that we've saved you a bit of time. If you'd like to tip us to say thanks, there's a PayPal link in the description. Zero pressure though, as I said, I do this for fun. If you want us to have a drink on you though, <laughs> that's fine too. Anyway, all the best, and bye for now.